Hey guys, Linode now has managed Kubernetes and they're keeping their usual simple pricing model. There's no management fees like AWS and other cloud providers. They even bundle transfer so you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and Azure. With the amount you save, if you're doing any K8s, it really doesn't make sense to use anybody else but Linode. It's now even easier to connect to your Linode account. With one less login to remember, you can use your GitHub account. Give it a shot. The link is in the description tab of this video below. And if you use that link, you'll get a $20 credit. Hey guys, what up? All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be looking at is the reasons why you wanna learn Vue.js in 2020. And we're gonna be looking at a lot of the key stats and statistics and everything. Vue.js is, uh, it's probably one of the fastest growing projects I've ever seen actually. Uh, in fact, for being a client-side Vue library for the MVC architecture for web development, uh, Vue now has more stars on GitHub than React and Angular. So for instance, Facebook's React project right now has 151,000 stars. Angular has 62,500. And then Vue.js has 167,000 stars. But it wasn't really until the last couple of years that it seems like the, um, I would say the beginner developer community really started picking up Vue.js. And then we've seen an explosion here. So this is the NPM trends for Vue.js over the last five years. And you could see from about the 2017 mark, and that was about when React was really starting to take off as well. Uh, well, that's not true. React probably 2016, 2015, 2016, like everybody started using it, it seems like. Uh, and then that just continued. But then I think once once everybody started using React, you know, you, you naturally get so, somewhat of a pullback. And then, you know, Vue was a new kid on the scene that uh, was just easier to work with. And you could see the popularity just seemed to skyrocket from there. Uh, but over the past couple of years, trends on Stack Overflow as well, you can see that around that same time, there was a huge explosion and the amount of questions that were being asked on Stack Overflow. So if we compare Vue.js to Angular and React, uh, Vue is definitely growing faster than the other two. Uh, and it's pretty much neck and neck with React right now. A lot of people will say Angular is all for production or for corporate development. Uh, and that's really just a bullshit excuse, to be honest with you, because all three of these are used by corporations now. So we've obviously seen this huge population or this huge growth in Vue.js, the amount of developers using it. And the real question is really, why is that? And it all comes down to the fact that Vue.js is by far the easiest of the three to get started with. And as an example of that, here is a local file. So with free tools, Visual Studio Code, I just point to a simple script file that's on a CDN uh, content distribution network that is uh, delivering a single JavaScript file. That, that's all I need. I can then start using the view library and start doing data binding. So here I get my, uh, my root element of the ID, and then you can start doing data binding right here. So I have the world variable. I'm referencing that variable right here. And the script is just running, and it's just easy to do, right? So I uh, have a simple index.html. I fire up a web server, and you have working Vue.js. Now that's very similar, I think, to the development experience that jQuery provided when it came along. We used to have to write all this JavaScript code. J jQuery came along and you did it the jQuery way and it just magically worked across all the different browsers. And we had to do you know, a lot of DOM manipulation and jQuery just allowed us to do that. Now it was kind of a mess when you started dealing with state and complicated UIs, uh, but it definitely got the job done for a long period of time and it was super easy to get started with. Anybody could just drop that script in and start writing jQuery code. And Vue.js is very similar. React requires a lot of build tools and everything. If you're gonna do a production environment, they might come out with a tutorial like this one that basically says, hey, you can do like uh, this uh, you know, React development and then put your React DOM in there and then like run a, a minifier and all this stuff. So basically it's saying, hey, you wanna use this in production, you better minify it because it's gonna be really big and ugly and uh, so then you have to know about minification, right? And it's like, okay, you want to do that, then you need to go ahead and point to this and all this other stuff. And the point of the matter is, is that this isn't the recommended way to write React. This is React's way of basically answering to Vue.js when it comes to just simply dropping in a file and being able to get started. Uh, React lacks that, and this isn't really a good production type option. And there's just a lot of crap here when you compare it to just something like what I just showed you with Vue.js in order to get up and running. And then when you compare that to something like Angular, I think Angular becomes even more complex and, and convoluted to get started with. Like with Angular, it's almost like the recommended approach is always, um, and I suppose the same thing with, with React now is create React app 
Uh, Angular has basic apps that it will spin up for you. But at the end of the day, there's so many build tools. A lot of people just simply want to know what is the best option for me. And, and that, that is always going to be a personal decision. If, you're, if your um, idea is that I want to get a job and I, I need to go where corporate development is, then I think it's still pretty clear that Angular and React is where you want to focus your time. But if you're trying to complete a project, you're new to coding, you're, you're new to MVC development, you're especially new to JavaScript, DOM manipulation, all that stuff, it doesn't hurt to start off with Vue, create your projects in Vue, put out a portfolio or some sort of website that you can point to, and then take that knowledge from there and then start learning something like React or Angular. And I think uh, that'll, that'll go a long way. But um, you know, the point is that there's just no way of actually saying which one is best. I'm not trying to crap on any one of them, uh, but they're all similar. They do the same job, right? Angular, Vue, React, they're all client-side libraries that are maintaining your UI. Uh, and they have uh, virtual DOMs, they're component driven. Um, and yeah, like I said, they're all three essentially template engines. Now you could argue Angular is more of a full stack, does routing and all that crap uh, for single page apps. But again, the same thing is also for Vue and React. They just don't come included with the actual core library. If you wanna do a single page app in Vue, you can easily do that. If you wanna do the same thing in React, you can do that. So. It always just comes down to personal preference. Vue is the easiest to get started with, but just because you choose Vue right now doesn't mean like, hey, you have to be a Vue developer forever. It seems like so many developers are like, whatever my decision is, like I'm never gonna go back. And when I was learning the program, I always like jumped around. Like I would spend some time with PHP, maybe jump over to Python, jump back to Perl, back to Python, stuff like that. Um, and the knowledge that I have from each language sort of carried over to the others. So. I think the same thing can be said for Vue, Angular, React. It's all web development. And specifically, it's all JavaScript development. Another good thing about Vue is that similar to the other libraries like React, um, React had the React Native project that allowed you to write, the, uh, write code using React's philosophy for component-driven development and all that. And then you could have that apply to actual native Android and iOS phones. So you could build uh, mobile applications using uh, the React ecosystem. And then Vue followed suit with that. So now you can do the same thing with Vue using Vue Native. Um, and I mean, we could argue whether or not these tools are actually the best way to write a mobile app. I always think, you know, true native is the best way. But uh, the, these tools, I think, do provide a lot of uh, ease of use for basic mobile applications. All right, and at the time of this video, probably one of the biggest reasons and the new reasons to actually learn Vue.js, uh, a lot of this stuff you guys already know about, but Vue.js uh, 3.0 is getting ready to come out, and it's going to be a huge transformation, um, not just in the way that the actual architecture is written and constructed, but it's also using new technology that's going to make Vue.js a lot more performant. Now, according to this logrocket.com, they have some statistics here that are on speed and performance. And when you look at this, if you look at all the different things from startup time to DOM manipulation to memory allocation, uh, Vue.js is pretty on point with, with, they're all three very performant. But going forward, Vue.js is getting a complete rewrite from the ground up and it's using a new technology called proxy. And it's gonna be able to use this new proxy in order to be able to tell whether or not the state uh, data is stale and needs to be uh, rendered. So right now, the Vue.js library uses a lot of getters and setters on objects, and it does a, um, what's called diff checking to see whether or not something is dirty and that whether the DOM needs to be re-updated. And, and uh, in the case of Vue.js 3.0, they're now going to use this proxy object, and this is going to make things a lot more performant when it comes to state maintenance within your component. Another huge change with Vue 3.0 is the fact that it's gonna be rewritten from JavaScript into TypeScript. Now we know TypeScript compiles down to JavaScript. One of the biggest advantages of TypeScript, um, it, it, you know, inter, uh, classes, interfaces, all that stuff, it was brought to you before even ES6 had the ability, but type checking is simply why TypeScript is called TypeScript. It has the built-in support for type checking, which JavaScript is not. It's a dynamically interpreted language which means that there's naturally tons of bugs in any large complex software development uh, application out there. It's gonna to be tons of bugs if it's written in JavaScript or and or if there's not bugs, there's tons of code written around type checking. 
for a large JavaScript application where TypeScript removes that, that necessity. So you can add Vue.js now to another large project that is moving over to TypeScript for its future development. So with all that being said, Vue.js is already extremely popular. It's already really well loved and it's going to continue to get better. This new update is now going to be TypeScript written to its core. The minified bundle package is going to be smaller. Using the proxy object is going to increase performance um, as well as some bug fixes that they're doing along the way that, um, that, that they're catching. So I think a lot of reasons to be excited for Vue.js. Uh, you know, if, if I were just getting started, I think Vue.js is a great option. I, I think, um, and take this with a grain of salt, guys. There's more than one way to do something, right? There's more than one technology all the time. So a lot of this stuff is very opinionated, but really uh, whatever you choose, I think you'll be just fine. But if you're just getting started, then I think Vue.js is probably the best of the three.